Hey, what's up? All-in-one computers are a special category. Let's imagine a consumer who needs such a computer. On the one hand, he does not want to clutter his workplace with a separately standing monitor and a big box of system unit. And he is not going to mess with it either. On the other hand, he also does not plan to move it. And within the limits of the 15-17 inch laptop screen is somehow quite cramped. As a result, cross off the list of classic PCs and laptops. What are we left with? Powerful monoblocks with a compact design and a big screen. A great example is the Lenovo Yoga All-in-One 7. Let's find out what this beast is all about. At first glance, there's no way to tell that this is a full-fledged, powerful computer. Outwardly, the Yoga All-in-One 7 looks more like a designer's monitor. Yes, the first thing that catches your eye is the large screen surrounded by thin bezels. It's a 27-inch IPS panel with 4K resolution. That is 3840 by 2160 pixels. The color gamut is 95% of the color space DCI-P3, and the maximum brightness of 400 nits. The refresh rate is 60 Hz. The rectangular stand behind the screen is the main body of the computer. The design allows you to tilt the case with the screen forward and backward, adjust the screen height and even rotate the screen 90 degrees in portrait orientation. The latter is most likely to be appreciated by IT people, and those who work with vertical photos and videos. The compact size has not impaired the connectivity. On both sides and on the back are a lot of connectors. Let's go around the circle. The right side is the most modest. The power button and the mini joystick for the on-screen menu. On the back is a power connector, display port 1.4 video output, always on USB A 3.2 Gen 2, Ethernet, 2 USB A version 2.0 and USB C 3.2 Gen 2. Finally on the left side is another USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, the same version USB-A, a combo audio jack and a source switch. Yes, this computer can serve as an external monitor, for example for a laptop. The procedure is as simple as possible. I connected my laptop to the mono block with a USB-C to USB-C cable, clicked the switch and configured the laptop to display the desktop on the second monitor. In monitor mode, the on-screen menu is available. The important things here are the color space settings, for example, DCI-P3 or sRGB, or split-screen display options, when a part of the screen is dedicated to the picture from an external source and another part to the monoblock itself. 1 to 1 and 2 to 1 split are available. In the front, in the bottom of the case under the fabric covered panel the branded JBL speakers with total power of 10 watts are hidden. The sound is certainly not equal to freestanding full-fledged speakers, but much better than laptop speakers. So, together with the excellent screen you get a mini cinema. It is literary all-in-one PC. That's why peripherals come in a bundle. Here we find a wireless mouse and keyboard, plus a separate module with a webcam. A couple of words about each item. For the wireless connection there is a small white USB dongle which has a frequency of 2.4 GHz. The mouse itself is compact and symmetrical. It is powered by one AA battery. It is possible to change the battery just by removing the upper panel. It is held here by magnets. There is also a storage compartment for the dongle next to the battery. The keyboard is full size, with very quiet keys. Powered by a built-in rechargeable battery, you can charge it with the USB-A, USB-C cable. It is nice that both keyboard and mouse are made in silver and white color to look harmoniously next to this monoblock. The battery life is promised. For mouse, up to 12 months, for keyboard, up to 2 months without recharge. Finally, the last accessory in the set. On the top end next to the two microphone holes there is a separate connector, covered with a rubber cap. That is where the webcam is inserted. It is held there securely by magnets. The design allows adjusting the tilt and has a physical curtain for the fans of maximum privacy. Inside there is an infrared sensor for Windows Hello, i.e. face unlock, and the camera itself, capable of writing video up to full HD 30 FPS. Moving on to the hardware. My sample has an AMD Ryzen 7 6800H processor. This is a powerful mobile chip. 
Zen 3 Plus architecture, 6 nanometers, 8 cores and 16 threads. The motherboard has 32GB of soldered DDR5 RAM. The storage is a 1TB M2 SSD with medium speeds. There is also a MediaTek MT7921 module on board to support Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1. An AMD Radeon RX 6600M discrete graphics card with 8GB of GDDR6 memory is responsible for the graphics. All this stuff is cooled by two fans and six heat pipes. The upgrade options are not the most varied. And it wouldn't be logical to take this type of PC to mess around under the hood. In fact, you can add another M2 format SSD and replace the wireless module. That's all. I want to say right away that the computer is really powerful and easily capable of handling any task. And, taking into account the excellent 4K display, we get the best for all kinds of variants of work with content, processing photos with Photoshop, editing video in Premiere or DaVinci, working with 3D encoding. Although no one forbids playing with gigantic spreadsheets in Excel. Used OSST for maximum warm-up. During the stress test power consumption was stable at 65 watts and clocked in the range of 4100 to 4300 MHz. The temperature did not exceed 76 degrees Celsius. At the same time the cooling system was unusually quiet. It barely rustled. I was pretty surprised, especially if you remember, how even the quietest gaming laptops with similar hardware howl at such load. In the case of this monoblock you can even play without headphones. For those who like details a small block of performance tests of the processor. Cinebench showed 1377 points in the single core and 13056 in the multi-core test. Corona Benchmark managed rendering in 1 minute 46 seconds. See the screenshot for overall performance in workloads and some PC Mark 10 indicators. Now let's torture AMD Radeon RX 6600M discrete graphics card. It should be said from the start that TGP values are not specified in official specifications. But according to tests and games it is limited to 80 watts. I will start with the synthetics. I ran several tests in 3D Mark at once. The newest and heaviest is Speedway with ray tracing. The result is 1325 points. Port Royal, again with ray tracing. The result is 3605 points. Finally, the classic Time Spy. Result, 7938 points. And now games, as even mobile RTX 3080 is not always able to show comfortable frame rate in 4K resolution, and 1440p is often too much for our hero. That is why I chose full HD resolution for testing. Experimentally it was able to achieve comfortable FPS in this resolution. Especially if you don't abuse ray tracing and enable FSR when possible. If you don't believe me, here is Cyberpunk Torment on this machine at 4K resolution even at medium settings. I think 11 to 12 FPS convinced you. In full HD you can already enjoy smooth gameplay, and the picture does not hurt your eyes with excessive looseness. And so Cyberpunk 2077, full HD, impressive graphics, AMD Fidelity FX on auto. The result is an average of 73 FPS. And right away you can draw additional conclusions on the hardware. The graphics card is almost fully loaded and almost constantly running around the maximum for this implementation of 80 watts. At the same time in terms of temperatures all is very good. The CPU heats up not more than 73 degrees Celsius, and the graphics card not more than 59 degrees Celsius. The cooling system is only barely audible. Horizon Zero Dawn. The same full HD, ultimate quality. Average 86 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Graphics quality is the highest averaging 103 FPS. And then there's the power supply question. Since the case of the monoblock is thin and slim, and the hardware is powerful, enough power supply is implemented, as in laptops, in a separate unit. This is a 300 watt brick, practically the twin brother of such power supplies for gaming laptops Legion series. Prices and conclusions. The Lenovo Yoga All-in-One 7 in my configuration costs about €1,800 or $1,600. It doesn't seem cheap. On the other hand, if you consider the hardware and the form factor is quite an adequate price tag. The space it takes up is much less than a traditional desktop PC and the screen size is much larger than that of a notebook. It is the perfect choice for those who want high performance and a big screen in a relatively compact size. At the same time, the stylish design will not spoil any interior. So, 
If you want a powerful all-in-one computer, the Lenovo Yoga All-in-One 7 is one of the best options today. Although for such requests, of course, you will have to splurge. That's been it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.